All right, we're going to talk about limits. We're going to talk about what a limit is to start with. So we find limits of functions. Let's start with a function, x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1 over x minus 1. All right, so maybe let's draw a quick little graph of this function. So it looks like a parabola. Um, and maybe that makes sense to you, maybe it doesn't. That's, that's not of the utmost importance at the moment. Um, what we do want to look at is the limit of this function. And functions don't have limits as, as entire things. We have limits uh, as you get close to some x value. So let's get close to 1. Okay, So we're going to find the limit of this function as we get close to the x value of 1. Um, so what I mean by that is we're going to look um, at maybe a half, right, and see what that y value is. And then we'll get closer to 1 and closer and closer and closer. And see, as we look at each y value, are we getting close to one singular value? Uh, and it looks like we are. It looks like we are on this side. Also, on the other side, we'll go to uh, maybe one and a half, and then we'll go to 1.25, and then we'll go to 1.1, and 1.01, and so on, and just gets closer and closer to x equals 1, and see what does y equal, okay? So the way we write this is the limit, as x gets close to 1, of the function. So we see the limit as x approaches 1 of this, or the limit of this as x approaches 1, whatever. Um, and the, really the only thing that we have to ask ourselves is, uh, is it getting to the same y value, getting close to the same y value as we approach from the left and from the right? That's all we have to uh, answer. And if it is, then that's the limit. Now the thing about this, uh, to, to highlight this, that we're trying to just approach the same value, not actually get to it necessarily, um, you might be saying to yourself, well, that'd be really easy. Like, you want to know that y value. So we'll just plug 1 in to this function and figure out what that y value is at 1. But you'll get 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, when you plug in 1's in here, over 1 minus 1. That's 0 over 0. Okay, over 0 would be bad enough. Divide by 0. Um, actually, in limits, that's something we could talk about. But 0 divided by 0, that's just... That's called an indeterminate form, and it, we don't know what to make of it. We don't know what it could be approaching. Uh, it could be doing any number of things. So how can we do this? How can we determine what value of y we're getting close to? Well, we can come in here, uh, put the function into a calculator, since we have the fortune of having calculators in this day and age. Um, well, I, yeah, you might have noticed I put this in wrong. Okay, so there we go. All right, so look at the graph, and it'll be really zoomed in because I was doing something else earlier. Here we go. So this should look like a parabola like we have drawn here. Looks pretty good. Um, so we could look at the trace function and, and move close to x is 1, x is 0.8. We have 1.7 for y, x is just past 1 at 1.06, and we have a y of 2.13. So 1.7, 2.1, it looks like we're getting close to 2, but we want to be sure. Um, we want to see a pattern, you know, leading up, getting close to 2, if that's what we think it is, uh, on the left and on the right. Uh, so we'll look at the table so we can track all of this. So... Uh, so right in the middle, we'll put, if we go to 1, we get an error. You can't divide by 0, so uh, that's no good. So we'll try and get close. We'll get to 0 0.9. We'll get closer, 0 0.99. Looks like we're getting closer to 2 here in the y value. Uh, let's try 0 0.9999999, whatever. And we are, well, it looks like 2, but if you actually look at it, it's actually just really close to 2. 
and there wasn't enough space to put all that stuff right there. Um, all right, so we'll come down over here. So that's from the left, right? That's what that's one of the things that we said from the left. Now from the right would be numbers that are on the right of one, bigger than one, like one point one. Get two point two. That's close to one. One point or two point two. That's close to two. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, we did one point zero one. Oh, I see what I did. One point one. We'll move up here. 1.01, we'll get very close. It says 2, it's really, really close to 2, 2.00002. Um, so that's it. Since we're getting close to 2 on the left and on the right, that's the limit. It, the limit is 2. The so limit is 2. Right, so we'll write it in words since uh, f of x is getting arbitrarily close to 2. Okay, by arbitrarily we mean just like whatever. You, you don't think it's close enough to 2? We'll get closer to 2. We'll just. We'll put an x value that's closer to 1 and get even closer to 2, as close to 2 as you want. It's completely arbitrary how close we have to get to 2. It's, it's just incredibly close. Um, so back that off. Arbitrarily close to 2 as x approaches 1 from the left and from the right. we would say, because of that, because f of x, or the y value, is getting arbitrarily close to 2 as x approaches 1 from the right and from the left, or the left and the right, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, of uh, this here, is 2. The limit is 2. Okay? So that's an example of uh, a, a limit that's a little harder to find, because you have to get out your calculator, use the table, because you can't just plug in this number and get the y value. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you can uh, do that. It's that easy. Um, and so let's, before we scroll down and, and talk about functions that are easy to find the limits of, uh, ask yourself, why did that happen? Why could we not just plug in 1? What happened on this graph? Well, it, it broke up, right? You, you would have to technically kind of lift your pencil, jump over that gap, and continue to draw the, the function. And that's what we've come to call a hole. There's a hole right there. Um, so if there's a hole, it's going to be one of those functions that's a little tricky. So if there's not a hole, then maybe it's one of those functions that's easy to find the limits for. And it turns out that's true if we have what is referred to informally as a well-behaved function you can use something called direct substitution. Um, let's draw some axes here. So here's a function, and we'll call this c. c is like 1 in the previous example. It's just the x value that uh, we're getting close to. So we're going to get close to c, and we're going to see what we get close to here. We're going to get close to what we'll call capital letter L. Um, the thing about this is, if there's no hole there, if we want to ask ourselves, what are we getting close to on the left and on the right? We're getting close to this point, and if this point is on the graph, meaning there's no hole there, then we could just plug C into the function. If we had this function, f of x, we could just take C, put it right in there, so f of c would give us the limit. Uh, seems a little too easy. Uh, so any function that is well-behaved, we're going to be able to do that. So here's a well-behaved function. Here's a couple of examples of not well-behaved functions. There's one. It has a hole uh, at c. Uh, and just a side note, if c happened to be like over here where there wasn't a hole, 
then we would say it's well-behaved right there. We could use this approach at this point. But since we're talking about a place where uh, the, the function is not well-behaved, where there's a hole, we're going to have to do something like the previous example. We're going to have to get out the calculator and plug in some values close to whatever c is, whether it's 1 or 2 or whatever, and see what y seems to be tending to do. Okay? Uh, or uh, a, a function that's not well-behaved, uh, where you can't draw it nice and smoothly like this, and by the way, this smoothness um, is, is continuity. Um, and continuity is just being able to draw the function basically without picking up your pencil. So we'd have to pick up our pencil and jump over that hole to, to draw this function. Um, here's another one, right, at C. This function has a vertical asymptote, and we'll talk about that in a second. That doesn't even have a limit, but uh, that's not well-behaved. It's not continuous. Um, but most of the time what we're talking about is this situation where there's a, there's a hole, and you're going to have to plug in values that are close to C. But ones that you don't have to do that with, uh, let's think of all the functions uh, where it's well-behaved, so we can just plug C into the function and figure out what we're getting close to. Um, so that would be like polynomials. Second, third, fourth degree, whatever polynomials. Um, all of those are nice and smooth. If you look at the graph of a, of a, of a second degree, it looks like this. A third degree looks something like that. A, a fourth degree might look like this. They're all nice and smooth and, well, not smooth necessarily, but continuous. They uh, can be drawn without picking up your pencil. Uh, you got. Um, root functions right, that'd be the square root function, the cubed root function they are going to look something like that or maybe like this or something like that and, and those are nice and continuous and you can draw them without picking up your pencil um, you've got exponential functions right? exponential growth or decay um, that kind of looks not good exponential growth, exponential decay, we've got those, those are nice and continuous. We've got logarithmic functions looking something like this. Right? Any function that you can think of, a, li a linear function would be well behaved. Um, and, and any other function that you don't have to pick up your pencil and jump over some gap uh, is well behaved. And so what that means is that instead of putting numbers that are in, that are close to C and seeing what Y is tending to do, we can just plug in C into the function and be done with it. Um, so we'll look at some specific examples in the next video, but uh, those are well-behaved, and, and that's really the dream. You'd, you'd like to have a continuous function that you can just plug that C value into and then just know. Um, so we're going to talk about when the limit does not exist. Okay, so when does that happen? There's a few different situations. Okay, let me remind you from our informal definition up here of the limit existing. Um, so if f of x gets arbitrarily close to, in this case it was 2, it was 2, Okay, so in general, just something. If it is getting close to something, we'll call that something L. Uh, as x approaches uh, c, we've already talked about c being the, the standard uh, arbitrary value of x that uh, we might get close to. So it approaches c from the left and the right then we have a limit. The limit as x approaches c of f of x would be l in that case. So if some part of this doesn't uh, happen, then we don't have a limit. So let's talk about one example where there's not a limit. Um, so let's say this is c, and we're looking at f of x, and it's looking good. 
it's getting close to C. Uh, it looks like it's getting close to this value right here. Okay, and uh, now we'll look on the right. We'll start to come towards C on the right side. So it's looking good, but then, oh, it goes towards some other value. Okay, well, on this side it's going towards a value, and this side it's going towards a value. Right? This is approaching, say, 3, and this is approaching 4. So, But we're not approaching the same thing from the left and the right. Okay, so it's approaching two different values. So the limit, let's shorten it up, does not exist because... Uh, f of x gets close to two different values. It doesn't approach the same thing on the left and on the right. Okay, that seems pretty clear. If it doesn't cl get close to the same thing on both sides, then it's just not working out. Um, here's another example. Let's say at C, right there, um, on this side, goes up like this. And on this side, maybe it also goes up like that. So you might say, well, they're getting close to the same thing. They're both going up. Uh, you might even say that on the left and on the right, we're getting close to infinity. We're approaching infinity. And actually, sometimes you do write that. Sometimes you'll write it that way. The limit as x approaches c of this function, f of x, is infinity. Okay, but we should really put quotes on that equals because you can't equal a concept. This is a, just an increasingly large number, is what infinity is. Uh, or just it represents an arbitrarily large number, or whatever. Um, but it doesn't represent a single value. Uh, and since we have to approach L, and L is a number, not a concept, this technically means the limit does not exist. Okay, So it doesn't exist again, because the function increases without bound. So there's no cap on how big f of x could get as we get close to c. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, so while we might say it equals infinity, all we're signifying there is uh, we're making shorthand of what the function is doing. It's going up on the right on the right and on the left it's going up as well but it's not approaching a single value so there is no limit technically speaking okay last example um, so I'm not gonna draw a graph we're gonna look at um, the sine of 1 over x and we're gonna look at the limit as x gets close to 0 so let's grab our calculator and we will enter that function. And we'll look at the graph. And we want to look at x as uh, getting close to 0, so we might want to zoom in there a bit. So we'll use the zoom box. And we'll start up here, move down to the bottom right of the box we want to use. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's better. We see kind of what's going on. We see that it's going up and down. Um, but it looks like we're not close enough because we can't quite see what's going on here. It's very steep, and we can't see what it's getting close to. With the previous function, with that parabola-looking thing, we could see it, was, it looks like it was getting close to 2. Um, so we'll have to zoom in more. Um, maybe we'll use zoom box again. We'll just make it a really skinny box so that we put really small values of x on the left and on the right. Now this ought to do it. This is taking a while. Okay, so see what we're doing is, uh, now this x value is going to be the left side of the screen. This x value is going to be the right side of the screen. That should kind of like stretch it out so we can see uh, what's going on. That looks worse. So, wow, I mean, there, there was even more up and down the closer we got. Um, but maybe if we, if we just get in a little bit closer, um, we can see what's uh, going on. So maybe we just need to zoom in one more time where, oh, okay, so 
come down here. Like that. Okay, so now we're way zoomed in, and, and to, to go even more narrow, uh, a box is going to zoom you know, a lot further. So here's the y-axis. I don't know if you can make that out, but uh, now we're going to kind of stretch this over to the left side and this over to the right side, even smaller values of x. Uh, being the left and the right. And now it, it just looks worse. So it's very it's very odd. And you know it seems like what's gonna happen, the more we zoom in, the worse it's gonna get, really. Um, so maybe maybe we're just not zooming in far enough. Let's let's use the window. Um, you know the left side of the screen is now at negative point 0, 0, 003 that's pretty small but let's go really small let's go negative point zero 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 one or something uh, so that's six zeros and a one and on the other side we'll do the same thing six zeros and a one we'll look at the graph now now we are really zoomed in if if we haven't zoomed in far enough I I would be surprised if, if we're supposed to zoom in even farther um, I, I don't know what we're supposed to do. Um, and, and we certainly can't see what's going on here. Um, maybe if we look at the table and we get really close, like uh, maybe negative point zero 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 one. Okay, now maybe we're kind of getting somewhere because here uh, it looks like maybe we're getting negative point five. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the limit. So maybe let's go. Um, we'll go to uh, eight zeros and a two instead of a 1. Um, but that's really close. I mean, that, that should be uh, just on the other side of 0, right? This point zero 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 whatever 1 on the negative side should be really close to 0, and this should be also really close to 0 on the other side. So if the limit is negative 0.5, we should see when we press Enter something close to negative 0.5. But we don't. And, I mean, that, that's kind of close. If, if you had 0.2 of something and 0.5 of something, well, that'd be kind of close to each other, but really, it's it's not in terms of limits. This isn't getting close to 0.5. This isn't close enough to 0.5 to say, like, yeah, that's what it's getting close to. Um, uh, but, you know, maybe we just need to get closer. I don't know. Now it's negative 0.9. This, is, this seems kind of crazy. Um, uh, let's try this. That's not... None of these seem to be close to each other at all. Maybe these two are kind of close, but we're not approaching the same value. All right, so here's what is is happening, and, and you've seen it in the picture. It's just oscillating forever, okay? It's oscillating between two values. Okay, and that'd be the reason, the reason why the limit doesn't exist. Here it doesn't exist because we're not approaching the same... Uh, number on the left and the right. Here we're not approaching anything, we're just increasing it without bound. We could be decreasing without bound or whatever. And on this one, we're oscillating between two values. We're not going in crazy. Uh, we're definitely not approaching the same thing, but we're not approaching anything. We're just going back and forth forever. Um, and you could stop the recording right there and, and say, I get it. If it oscillates forever, then we have a problem. But I want you to understand why it's doing that, so maybe you want to pay attention to that. So, Let's see what we're doing. We're getting close to zero. X is getting close to zero. So let's look at what's happening here. If you put in a small number, a number that's close to zero, like 0 0.01, 1 divided by 0 0.01 is going to be 100. Um, 1 divided by 0 0.001 is going to be 1,000. So the smaller X gets, the bigger 1 over X gets. So the smaller you make X, the bigger you make this thing that you're going to then take the sign of. Okay. So the smaller we make x, the bigger this actually gets. So if we look at our unit circle, since we're talking about taking the sine of this thing, let's talk about a big number. Let's say we put in a really small number for x, that means we get a really big number for 1 over x. And so a really big number is, on the unit circle, an angle, just around, 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 around a lot. That's a pretty big number, right? Let's stop right there. And what do we do then? We take the sine of that really big number, so it's some number, right, between 1 and negative 1. Now we get 
closer than that. Let's put a number that's even smaller than x. That means 1 over x is even bigger. So that means we're going to go past here. We're going to go around and around and around a bunch of more times. And maybe we'll stop down here. Look at that angle. Take that sine value. It's just some number between 1 and negative 1. Let's go smaller, right? Smaller number for x, bigger number for 1 over x. Round and round and round and round and round. Maybe we get to here. Look at this angle. This number, this sine value is just going to be really close to 0. So really, by, by choosing a number that's close to 0, we're, we're almost randomly, I'm, I'm using air quotes you can't see, randomly uh, just choosing some angle and then taking the sine of it. That's not going to converge to a single number. Uh, that's not going to settle down and be like, yeah, negative 0.5. Because um, even if you get negative 0.5, which would be uh, an angle there or there, once you get closer to zero and take a and one over x uh, turns into an even bigger number, you're gonna just completely leave 0.5 behind, negative 0.5, and and go somewhere else, just some other angle. So that's kind of an explanation of this oscillating behavior. Um, so learn what a limit is. If you're approaching a single y value from the right and from the left, that's your limit. Sometimes limits are really easy to take because they're nice well-behaved functions, polynomials, root functions, and so on. And so at that c value, all you have to do is put that c into the function, and uh, and that's the limit. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at some specifics there. And then three examples of when a limit does not exist because it doesn't approach the same value, because it pre increases without bound and doesn't inc it doesn't approach a value at all, or it doesn't approach a value at all, not because it increases without bound, but because it oscillates forever. Um, so there you go. I thank you for hanging in there and watching all that. Hope you're smarter for it. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you need any help.